And I think we're going to go to Kentucky today. Scott is on the line. Hey, Scott. Hey, Leo. Oh, boy. Thank you. You're a Kentucky no, fan, aren't you? No, absolutely not. I'm a USA <laughs> soccer fan. Oh, right, okay. Right okay. So I'm a soccer fan. And, is, um, is that Manchester United, that scarf? I, no, that's USA. USA. Oh. USA. And, and and the other one in the back is the USA um, Mexico World Cup qualifiers. So oh, cool. the last couple ones have been in Columbus. Oh, cool. Dos say zero. We beat them two nothing. So very fun. Nice. Uh, so give fun. me your best goal. Let me hear what happens when they, when they kick it into the net. There. It's it's usually something. Like, we well in my house, my daughter and I go when they score. USA, yeah. USA, <laughs> USA, 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 and then we hold those scarves up real high. <laughs> So, you know, the number one it. sport in the world, soccer, sure. right? Not football. And following Absolutely. soccer in Kentucky used to be very hard, and following technology in Kentucky used to be very hard, but then I found you on Tech TV. That's right. And then, so you've increased my technical literacy um, immensely. Thank you, So Scott. I want to thank you for so many years of uh, keeping me up-to-date technology-wise. But the problem is that I started like watching all the other shows too, like Home Theater <laughs> Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, and he inspired me to build this home theater that I'm sitting in right now. And then over wow. time, I decided I need to get um, all my movies so I don't have to get up off the couch and stick the Blu-ray in the drive because that would be like that's old. And I want to be able to like <laughs> store them all centrally. So I got a, a West a Synology NAS and stuff. Oh, good, good choice. You uh, probably listen to Doctor Robert. And, Father Robert yeah. loves his Synologies. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Yep, and then so I had the two-bay Synology NAS with two, three terabyte drives kind of mirroring each other, and I started backing up the MK, making MKV files with my backups and my Blu-rays. And at 20 to 40 gig, I started running out of space. Is that how big they are? Wow. Yeah. At 20 wow. to 40 gig, full full rips. And then I also want to have the... You get all the menus HD. and the extras. Right, all the extras. Yeah, so so it worked. everything works really well, but I'm starting to run out of space, and I have more Blu-rays to rip and no space on my NAS to store them. How much storage do you have now? I have two three terabyte Western Digital Reds and they're mirroring each other. So three terabyte total space. Cause you know, if I a dry failure, I would hate to lose all the movies I've ripped. You're doing raid, raid one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now if yes. you get three or more drives, you can do raid five, right. which gives you kind of the best of both worlds. You get expanded capacity. Uh, more, you know, right now you're only getting half the total. You'll get a little bit more like two thirds of total, mm -hmm. plus the redundancy. Yep. And and in many cases, hot swappable. I don't know if the Synologies are hot swappable, but in many cases, so Synology makes five bays. I think they make eight bay. I think you know it just gets more expensive, not just for the con the enclosure, but it also gets more expensive for the drives. You got to buy drives for all of those. Um, but those are those are those Synologies are great if you like them. I, I like it, but it has lots of features I just don't use, right? Right. I'm just, right. I'm using, I'm just using my Mac Mini as the Plex server. So you I'm just not want a massive a, storage right. unit. You don't Big need... Big storage box that's yeah. protected, reliable. You don't have to worry what about it. What should he do? Uh, exactly. There's a couple good options, right? So for me, a little bit more technical, I built my own. So I've got a server running. It's my media server. I think I've got four or five drives in there, five drives, I guess, for redundancy. Um, and then I run ZFS on top of that. Um, so, you know, I can always, if I lose a drive, I can replace it really easily. I don't have to worry about any um, corruption or problems with it. It, it looks for that and fixes it automatically. Uh, so that's what I do because I'm able to do that. I just set the server, you know, under my desk, in the back of my desk, sits there all day long. And then all my other media devices uh, point to that. So I run Kodi, for example. It just points to that and streams all my movies and stuff. Uh, if I want to stream something to my phone, same thing. I just pull it up, attach to it, and it's good to go. So it's but just big, a big, dumb disk. A big, dumb server, basically, yeah. that's running ZFS. And the nice thing is about that, you can do it on Linux, or better yet, you could do it on FreeBSD. There's even FreeBSD distributions that are built exactly for this purpose. FreeNAS. FreeNAS is the one that most people use. So it makes it really easy to manage. You don't have to worry so much about getting jumping on the command line and figuring out how it Why works or what CFS? to do. Why CFS? Is that a better file system to use for so, this? Ironically, I think one of the first times I was actually on any of your shows, it was we were talking about ZFS because yeah. I worked for Sun Microsystems at the time. Which created ZFS as Which part of ZFS. Solaris. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. So ZFS, one, one thing it does really well is it handles corruption, redundancy, all that stuff is taken care of for you. It's a it, modern file it's system. It's a modern file system that makes use of extra memory that you may have in your system. So if you've got a, a box with a lot of memory, ZFS is going to use that for caching ah, purposes. So it's a little smarter than your average file system right. and your average uh, uh, 
box that you would have sitting in the corner. Um, and it, it, it really, it, anything that you can think of, so for example, setting up a NAS device. If you have free NAS, you don't have to worry about this. If you're more on the command line, um, you can just type, you know, mount this file system and share it on NAS in one command, and it just does it. And then you can access it over whatever protocol you desire, NFS or SIFS or whatever. How, how geeky are you, Scott? <laughs> that, that might, I mean, I think there's um, the time to benefit ratio. Yeah. So I have two young children yep, and yep. got a pretty, uh, pretty busy job and um, social life. So I don't know if like building my own is necessarily something I would have the time to do yeah. um, right now. But, um, you know, I'm just looking for something that will be kind of cost effective and I can grow with a little bit. And um, I think those are the two main things. And also, um, can my wife fix it if I'm gone and mm -hmm. something happens? Free, na free NAS is an awesome solution, mm -hmm. but it is really kind of a geek yeah. solution. Um, and you, you could see the benefits of ZFS and all of that. But, you know, you're, you're basically taking a beige box. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily even going to save you money. Depends if you've got something lying around. You still have to buy the hard drives. Here's this, one of the big synologies. This is, what is it, 8? drive the disk station ds1815 you know you put that in raid 5 you're going to have a lot of storage you're never going to probably never going to run out uh, it's you know but that's that's expensive and it's in it so one of the solutions and i should mention these guys are a sponsor uh, but i know i noticed that uh, they mentioned you asked about this this is the drobo a lot of people use this this is kind of a consumer grade yes. nas mm -hmm. right um it, probably not what i would recommend if you wanted all of the features of Disk Station, the Synology software, or even more so FreeNAS. Mm -hmm. But boy, talk about simple. This is their, uh, their uh, five, I'll show you, I'll just take off the front, their five uh, drive unit. There we go. You don't have to fill all five drives, by the way. Uh, you need a minimum of three to do RAID 5. Actually, they don't do for RAID 5, they do Drobo's own proprietary right. RAID. It's very similar. One of the advantages, though, is it's hot swappable. So if, and you'll see on the front panel, it's not plugged in right now, but colors, it'll let you know when you're running low. This is the 5D, and see the, see the five lights there? It's green, that means all five drives have plenty of capacity. As it gets low, you can see which drive's getting full, and you can take it out, put in a bigger drive, yep. it'll rebuild on the fly without any downtime. So there are some real advantages to that. This is uh, Ethernet connected. That's all it's got in the back. It doesn't have iSCSI or anything like that. So, you know, it's based on your network. I'm sure it is uh, at least gigabit, if not faster. Uh, but fast enough to watch a, a DVD or yep. Blu-ray DVD movie off of it. And you'd probably never run out of capacity here because what's happening is drive makers are getting bigger and bigger. What's the, what's the biggest right now, four or five terabytes? Uh, I think you can even go bigger. I know. Can it, you really? Yeah, wow. I think you can go, uh, well, I know in the corporate world, we can go all the way up to 16 terabyte drives now. Wow. So, so that's one of the advantages, no, that's going to be very pricey, but that's one of the advantages. Is these can be heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. So typically in a RAID server, it's the size of the RAID is going to be, you know, based on the smallest drive you put in there. Right. And all of them will look to be that same size. This, it doesn't matter. So you can add capacity, and when bigger drives come along, you just swap out a, the smallest drive for the next biggest one up. And to me, as somebody that works in the storage industry, when Drobo first came out, that was the hu that was the biggest thing. Oh, yeah. Right? That was like against oh, yeah. all the rules of storage. You always use the same size disk right. across your array. And they're saying, no, 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 just put in whatever you want. And it actually works. So for a simple solution, this is actually a really nice one. Because you can even take advantage of maybe some old drives you have laying around. Well, I do. In fact, the, you, the, you'll see the three drives in here, just some old WD drives. Right. So the drives you have well, already, you just put them in. And it's, I mean, it's literally this easy to put them in. You just slide it in. And you can even do that while it's running. You don't do it like that, but you, know, you get the idea. So I sh again, a disclaimer, this guy, uh, this company is a sponsor of some of our shows. Um, uh, in fact, I think they sent us this 5D for future advertising. That's why I have it lying mm -hmm. around. But, you know, they're a great company. They've done great stuff. Uh, yeah. I think the prices are fair. Um, it isn't a super, it's not even as, the software is not even as sophisticated, in my opinion, as Synology. Mm -hmm. But, boy, for what you get, it's awesome. It's really But I awesome. never used the Synology yeah. software. Well, yeah, well, as you I said. Barely use it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think as long as I can get that past finance committee, um, that looks, sounds like a pretty <laughs> well, good if, solution uh, right there. If your wife lets you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah if, I really like this. And if using one of your offer codes, save me some money, because I do, uh, I slept last night on my Casper. Um, oh, Nice. All right, well, then yeah, you must buy a Drobo because you can only buy stuff we advertise. That's, right. That's the rule now from now on. No, this All is, right. this is uh, I don't, I, are we going to have a, uh, do we have a Twit offer code for this? Do you know? Okay, if you go to uh, twit.tv and uh, click on sponsors, 
You'll find this, okay. the offer code for that. I don't know, it's probably Twit, but uh, I'm not sure. You should probably check. Uh, there you go. Awesome. See, those are all the all the sponsors, including Casper. Um, I can yeah. just take my, new, my existing drives. I can just take those out of That's the, the beauty of it. Now, exactly. remember, you're not going to see the data on them. You're going to have to rebuild it using their own special right. technology. Yep. It's going gonna, it's gonna to delete all the data, so... Yeah. You, you don't get to take up. that with you. You might want to set all up right. a little bit, move the files over. See, that's a good idea. And then use those old yeah. drives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I can't remember what the minimum is on here. I think you have to start with three, even though it has five slots. Right. Well, he's got two drives, so if he starts, if he gets three new drives... Oh, there you go. Puts those in, moves Copies all the files it over, over, and then add the other two. And then two. add the other two when everything, you're sure everything's working. You're yeah. going to have, like, so much data, you, space, you're never going to have to worry again. Yeah. Hey, it's really oh, nice. No, I, got a, I got a lot of uh, Disney Blu-rays to back up. <laughs> yeah, you know, the kids outgrow those at some point. So how old are your kids? Um, I have a nine-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl. Oh, well, nice. the five-year-old just needs Frozen over right, and over yeah. and just over and loop. over and over. <laughs> She, hey, she she likes she asked for like Star Wars and she asked oh. for uh, oh it's all right you're raising nice. a good geek child yes and my son actually just got done his summer enrichment program was a podcasting class awesome wow so, that's great oh so, yeah he made his first podcast for uh, for the summer enrichment program what town so, uh, what town in Kentucky are you Fort Thomas Kentucky Fort Thomas Fort Thomas I used to live in Cincinnati oh my god oh my gosh just over the river. <laughs> Literally, no. literally, Anderson Township. You're like 15 oh, minutes from where I used to live. Yeah, I'm, that's super close. Yeah, you were East Sider. Yeah, that's right. I, I stole my wife from the West Side of Cincinnati. <laughs> that, if you can believe it or not, she moved from the West Side over to Kentucky. Well, go eat a, go eat a few uh, uh, cheese conies for me because I miss those. Oh, what's a cheese uh, cody? Cheese coney. Coney. You remember cheese coney? coney Island hot dog? Yeah, basically. Uh, cheese yeah. dog. Chili. But in Cincinnati, I mean, it's... Oh, it's got Cincy chili on it? Oh, yeah. They put cinnamon in that stuff. That's not chili. Cinnamon, huh? chocolate. <laughs> It's good stuff. Take a chocolate bar and you put a chocolate bar in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we make it at home now because we can't. We have to ship it in from Cincinnati. So. Why well, you didn't bring it? I'll bring some yeah, next bring time. Bring some cheese conies I'll bring some next, next time. time. We'll have cheese conies in three ways, uh, or four ways, or five. That ways. sounds weird. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> All right. Take Thank care. You very much. Great to see you. All right. It's great Bye -bye. to see you. Thank you for the kind words. That's nice. There you go.